live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. The phone number here is 888-825-5225. But before you dial the number, you need to know that this show today is dedicated to generosity. So we're going to take calls from folks today that have a giving story, a generosity story. They were on the receiving end or the giving end of generosity because it is the season. Tis the season. This is... uh, Well, Christmas reminds us how important generosity is, and uh, it it is live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else. Rachel Cruz, number one best-selling author, Ramsey personality, and my daughter is my co-host today as we take your calls about giving. It's our annual generosity show, our annual giving show. So we want to hear from you. If you've got a great giving story, you can jump in. The phone number, 888 Five two two five. Merry Christmas to you. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. Kim is going to start off this hour in Canton, Ohio. Hi, Kim. Tell us your giving story. Merry Christmas. Um, hello, Dave. Hello, Rachel. Um, thank you for having me on the show. Um, this is my giving um, story. Back in February, my husband died of um, COVID. And um, I took a portion of the life insurance money and gave it towards my church's um, debt elimination. Wow. On November November 26th, my sons were there, and we all, they saw me write the check, fill out the envelope. We laid hands and prayed over the check, and the boys put it in the offering, and um, My husband, he was an amazing giver. He gave to people all the time. He gave cars and trucks and vans and cash to families in need. He gave wood and um, fuel oil to older people that needed heat in the winter. He just gave. It was his. It was who he was, and um, it was such a blessing to be his wife. It's such a blessing to give in his honor and his legacy. Wow. And our church, um, they're down to two hundred and seventy thousand dollars left on their mortgage, and twelve years ago it, it was a fourteen million dollar mortgage. So wow, wow, that's so powerful, Kim. Um, oh, I'm so that, sorry for your it, loss. Um, thank you, thank you. That was the motivator, you know, for for this. Um, So I'm curious for you, when you received that life insurance, obviously his legacy was one of giving, right? The way you just described him is just beautiful. Um, Mm -hmm. So what made you choose this specific way to give? Well, I felt that, you know, every year he gave to the legacy offering and there's usually a project that the church is doing. And this was his life insurance money, um, I wanted to give a tithe of it to the to the legacy offering be, so that he would continue giving mm. throughout all the years as a legacy. Um, I was going, he wanted me to retire. He wrote these letters about me retiring and he had me call Dave. I actually wrote a letter because I didn't think I could get through the um, phone call. But um, Dave gave me a... Um, uh, a coach, a financial coach. Her name is Lisa, Lisa Barber, and I worked with her for the last 10 months. And throughout that process, I came to, I didn't want to retire. I want to continue to fulfill God's will for my life, which I'm a teacher. Mm. And I love teaching children how to read. I love being at the school. I feel like I'm here for such a time as this. Mm. So instead of taking a portion of the re- of the life insurance and buying out so that I could retire early. Instead, I decided to continue working, continuing following God's will for my life and take God's will for his life and pay 
you know, give it to the legacy of my husband for God's kingdom to grow. That's that's how I came across came about that mm. whole process. Lisa helped me make these decisions, but I did make them myself, you know. Wow. Well, Lisa's a precious lady. You got a hold of a good one there. So that's good stuff. God, I love her. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do love her. What an Thank eventful. You. Thank you for giving me that. <laughs> yeah. What an eventful year you've had. Uh, mm-hmm. Unbelievable highs, unbelievable lows. And uh, it's very poignant, very beautiful. Great story. And uh, how old are your sons? I have a 26-year-old, a 24-year-old, and a 23-year-old. Okay. So these young men were able to sit there and see their dads, uh, see their mom write this check from their dad's life insurance into this, and and they get to have that imprint on the rest of their life, that thumbprint on the rest of their life. That was very well played. Um, Thank God that I was able to do that for for all, you know, for all to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Miss Kim. God bless you, honey, and a Merry Christmas to you. That's a great story, a mm. horrible start uh, to the story, and a beautiful end or a beautiful next step, whatever you want to call it. I don't know how to say how, what you say in that, but uh, uh, without s- saying something dumb and awkward. But yeah, but uh, uh, it's amazing that when people are in pain, uh, that generosity is something that automatically comes to mind. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is that there's like, a lot of these stories that we hear and that we'll probably hear today, right? That there's there's some level of people's stories that that pain is always a part of it, right? That that is that is a part of life, and I think that that scale is different for everyone depending on their specific story. Uh, but man, the depths of that pain in her case, I'm like, was the depths of her longing in that selflessness, right? And yeah. I think that that's a way to even combat and 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 I'm sure helped with the grief. Like there's a level too of when you're giving and serving, it's it, it, you are putting your eyes elsewhere, and there's just beauty in that, absolute beauty. Generosity is uh, considerably underrated as a healing agent. Um, it completely changes the chemistry of your body. It completely changes the uh, set of your emotions. It completely changes your spiritual walk. Uh, it literally will change the way you walk when you become generous and the more outrageously generous you become the more free you are as a person you find very few people who are depressed who are outrageously generous something to think about because what happens is i mean chemicals are released in your body that you get a high from being generous i mean it's it's unbelievable it is the most fun to have with money there's so much to it. It's mo- so much more than the math. So much more than the individual person that's helped on the other end of the check. There's so m- so many layers to this subject. This is the annual giving show on the Ramsey Show. And we want to hear from you. Rachel Cruz is with me. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Call us with your giving story or your receiving story. We're celebrating generosity. Merry Christmas. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information.
Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author. My daughter is my co-host today as we talk about giving today. This is our annual giving show. We're talking about generosity. If you have a story about generosity, giving or uh, or, or receiving that is inspiring and will help everyone, all of us expand our our vision for generosity, that's what this is for. The phone number is 888 Wayne is in Lincoln, Nebraska. Hi, Wayne. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, thanks for having me. Sure. My, uh, so after my first deployment, I came, came home in 2009 and was out running around eating all the food that I'd missed and stopped at a burger joint. There was a homeless man walking along the sidewalk, so I just – offered to have lunch offered for him to come have lunch with me and we ended up talking for several hours but he had gotten married in 1966 in 67 he was sent over to vietnam where he was shot in the head Mm -hmm. and suffered some severe brain damage he was unable to take care of himself and true to their vows his wife took care of him until the day that she died and so for three years, he was completely homeless, had no idea what to do. Um, we had lunch, and I ended up working with some of my unit leadership and some local veterans organizations, and this guy ended up getting uh, full VA disability and now has a, a place to stay in a VA veterans home in, uh, in the Dallas area. Wow. Man, you took it up. You took it up and ran with it. Way to go, dude. But it doesn't take a, a huge act of money to completely change somebody's life, and I think sometimes people get overwhelmed with that thought. Mm. Yeah, it, it, some, it often takes more time than it does money. In your case, that's for sure. Time and effort. Yeah. And, and, and a lot uh, of caring. Yeah. And that still is a... Um, an act of generosity in a maybe even in a greater way because so many people don't have any time they don't take any time they don't have any margin in their lives to stop and concentrate on someone else for a few minutes they're so busy doing themselves what's his name wayne jared jared okay so for you as you know you you obviously have completely changed the course of his life which is just absolutely incredible and like you said i love that it's more on that time and effort standpoint, not just money, right? You you walked with him to be able to do that. So you changed his life. What ways has he impacted you on, you know, even a day-to-day basis? How, how has your life been shifted because of him? Prior to that event happening, I'd kind of grown up with this belief that homeless people were, you know, lazy and drug addicts, the mm. stereotype that's not always true. And after this, I started slowing down and really thinking, well, everybody's got a story. Everybody's really got problems and it's never what it looks like on the surface. That's for sure. That's for sure. Everybody's got a story. Wow. Powerful dude. Powerful. Well done, sir. Thank you for calling with your story. Merry Christmas to you, Wayne. Hey, everyone that is calling in with their uh, giving story today and the phone number here is 888-8255- Two two five. We'll receive the Live and Give bundle, the Live and Give box. It has in it a one-year membership to Financial Peace University. It has in it a Total Money Makeover book. It has in it a Baby Steps Millionaires book, and that is on sale for ninety-nine dollars, which is about fifty, sixty bucks off of retail right now at RamseySolutions.com. But each of these callers will be getting that uh, Live and Give box uh, as they call in today. And, of course, you know, if you've got somebody that's just getting started with this stuff, you hand them the Total Money Makeover book, maybe you're down the road a little ways and you're ready to start really doing your investing and you're going to read the Baby Steps Millionaire's book. Um, and maybe you've got someone that needs to go through Financial Peace University or maybe it's you. So there's a, three different things there that apply to different situations, different places people are in their money journey. And so the live and give box be sure to check that out and like i say we're giving everybody that calls in today one mary is with us mary is in atlanta georgia hi mary welcome to the ramsey show hi hi dave hi rachel um thank you all so much for having me on the show to share um our story a small gift but one that i hope has been having a big positive impact on my niece and nephew love it tell us about it 
So just a little bit of brief background. During COVID lockdowns, my niece and nephew really started to struggle. They were both in middle school at the time. Their social life evaporated, their mental health plummeted, and they unfortunately started failing classes in virtual school. So at the time, my husband and I had just had our first baby. I was actually laid off in 2020 at seven months pregnant. So we were living off of just his income and our budget was pretty tight. But we decided initially just to host each kid for a special weekend once a month to get them out of the house, take them to do very fun, cheap things in our neighborhood and generally just love on them. My sister's, sisters, excuse me, my husband's sister actually joined us in this. And so it became this really fun family affair. Uh, later, the three of us decided to offer a grade bounty. It was pretty generous, 20 bucks for each A, 10 bucks for each B. And I am unbelievably happy to say that my niece has made a healthy return on the time she's invested in studying for about two years now. She just started high school this fall and earned a 4.0 her first semester. We're oh. really, really proud of her. All right. Um, and so this is especially important because her parents do not have any money to pay for her college, but the state of Georgia will cover all of her tuition through the Hope Scholarship if she has at least a 3.0 GPA at the end of high school. So we've talked to her list us about student loans and how she could avoid them, and she is really eager to keep those out of her life. So we're very much encouraging her to do that. Um, my nephew's also gotten himself a part-time job, and his grades started to improve, too. So I did want to just say thank you to y'all for um, the teaching and encouragement that you offer around financial generosity, because I struggle with a scarcity mindset sometimes, so it's hard to do for me on occasion. But I really like the idea of living with an open hand and just practicing generosity like a muscle until you're good at it. Amen. Well done. Good job, Mary. That's fun. <laughs> Hey, be sure to walk those kids. Uh, the Borrowed Future documentary is free to watch on YouTube now. I know. We usually watch a movie when they come over for weekends, and I keep telling my husband, let's watch Borrowed Future. And yeah. like, there is fun stuff on Disney+. Plus. That, that'll seal in the uh, no, uh, no debt to college idea. If you watch that, yeah. you see how horrible the whole student loan system is. Yeah, that'll seal that in for sure. Hey, uh, let me ask you something. You said scarcity mindset, and you're practicing a new muscle. Um what does it do to the scarcity mindset? I, my theory is, is that it moves you from scarcity towards abundance the more you're generous. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you're after you move more towards abundance, you're willing to be more generous. I don't know which is the cause, which is the effect, which is the chicken and the egg. What do you think, Mary? I, I really think it's about perspective because, you know, I'm sitting in my little house in Atlanta that my husband and I own thinking, oh, we don't have enough to give away. But there are so many people with less than that who really don't have enough that they could be generous. And so it's it's more about recognizing what's fear and what's fact and then deciding like that you want to share what you have with people that you really love or, or just people in your community. And I mean, once we started doing it really has gotten so much easier and so much more joyful to do. Mm. I'm I'm not going to lie. Like the first few times we did this, we started like giving money away. I was like, oh, God, how are we going to make the grocery budget this month? But really, it's been absolutely fine. You hadn't missed a meal. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary, what I love about your story is I'm like, you were so um, you took the needs very specifically of what they needed in the time. Right. So like during the lockdown, it's like they just needed to get out of the house. And that's what you provided. And then as they were starting to not do great in school, then you're like, okay, well, let's plug in here. So it's like, whether it's the time, the money, all of it, but, but being so intentional, Mary, which you really are in their lives to see what do they need and what can you do to maybe help fill that gap? And so that's, I think that's amazing. So really, really well done. Yeah. Extremely well done, Mary. Merry Christmas to you. Excellent, excellent job. It is, um, you know, that, that kind of intentionality comes from real love. And that yeah. that's tied into real generosity. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. 
Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular and roller shades, or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Merry Christmas, America. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author. My daughter is my co-host today. This is our annual giving show where we celebrate generosity, where you have been able to do something for someone or for something, and uh, you want to celebrate that generosity, or maybe you're celebrating someone did something for you. It's okay. Either way, we all love these stories. Generous people make us smile. Generous people make our eyes leak. We love generous people, and all of us do. All humans do. I mean, you got to be a real weirdo to hate somebody that's generous. So that's what we're celebrating this hour and uh, this day on our annual giving show. The phone number here is 888 825 And part of this giving show tradition is we always bring in one of our, our or some of our 1,100 uh, members of Ramsey Solutions, our team members. And Jess is on the stage. Jessica's with us. And uh, got a great giving story. Hey, Jess, how are you? Doing good. How are y'all doing? Great, good. great. Merry yeah. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, tell everybody about your story. It's fabulous. Yes. So you talk about uh, people giving to you and you being able to give to other people. This story is a little bit of both. So about four and a half, uh, actually five and a half years now, years ago now, we actually met the sweetest, most adorable little baby girl. And uh, she was a family member to some of uh, our church, church members there. And she couldn't be with her family. And so she needed a home. She needed parents. And... Um, I'm not a super cautious person, but my husband is ultra cautious and normally he has to think through things, especially something very serious. Uh, it's usually weeks, sometimes months. Yeah, to parents make a decision. is like serious. Parenting is That's pretty serious. Way I, up there I, on I the serious scale, there. yeah. Yes. So, uh, but we just kind of made eye contact at church uh, as as the request was being given to find a home for this little girl, and she's just adorable. And so uh, we kind of make eye contact and didn't even have to talk about it. We came together after that and said, are you in? Like, yep, I'm, I'm in. Are you in? And my husband said, yeah, I'm in. And so we, at that That's point. a long conversation. Very, <laughs> you know, 30 seconds long, maybe, tops. And so uh, after that, we decided to get custody of our Gabby girl. And it was about a four and a half year long process to actually solidify the adoption. Mm-hmm. And so a long process, I learned a lot of things about the legal system, some things I didn't really care to know about, but I feel like I'm kind of a, a lawyer at this point mm. after all of that. Yeah, I know. Um, and so... The legal yeah. system is enough to, uh, well, we'll just move on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so, but one of the interesting things through that is when we met Gabby, we actually were still in debt and we were working our way out of that. And one of the opportunities with that was not only getting out of debt, but finances was one of my biggest concerns going through this adoption. I was thinking, we got to get out of debt so that we can adopt this child. Well, finances was the least of my concerns. God provided. People were generous to us. Um, we had the funds to pay for it. The emotional side was mm. the hard part. Mm. And one of the stories with that was um, we were actually, we didn't have, we had custody of Gabby, but we hadn't adopted her yet. At her one-year birthday party at our house, we had actually um, had all of our friends, all of our family at our house just hanging out, and we had some medical debt that was standing out there um, from my husband had had a medical emergency, and so we were working through that. We were going to get that paid off, but we had been served. We had been served at collections, and so we had hear this knock on the door during this birthday party, and all our friends and family are there, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, oh, is somebody late? You know, are they arriving late? 
So they knock on the door and then my husband gets to the door and he says, there's a police officer out here. And I was like, why in the world would there be a police officer? And he was trying to be kind to us, but I was like, what in the world's going on? And he said, you, you've been served, your, your dad's going to collections. Mm. And my pride just dropped. I was like, what in the world? We're, we're fine, we're okay. But that's the moment where I was like, I've got to get out of debt and I've got to give this child a home. Mm. And so uh, we were able to do both. And not only were we able to be generous to her, she's been so generous to us. Oh, she's generous to everybody. She's amazing. Yeah. She's an amazing kid. Yeah, she's, yeah. A, she's a great kid. So yeah. very cool. So she's been with you how long now? Um, she just turned t- six this past weekend, and she's been with us since she was almost a year old. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Long time. Yeah, that year. Oh, yes. Okay. So there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of people that listen have adopted foster they're kind of in that in that space as well with that parental role so so talk to the parents out there that maybe have adopted or are fostering and you guys have walked through this over years so what encouragement do you have for those parents because I know that there's really hard days yes uh through it all like you were talking about even just the emotional side but man Mm -hmm. how that giving and and consistency yes and opening your home and your heart I'm like oh like yeah, that, that just that encouragement to parents that may feel discouraged this yes, holiday season. Absolutely. Yes. Hold your kids close. Mm. That quality time, it can still be yours even if you don't have the title. You know, we were parents before we even had the title. If we left it up to the government, we may never be parents. So that's one of the things that we're like, you know what, we're going to be parents to this, this child. And I would encourage all the potential parents out there, love those kids, hug those kids, give those kids everything that you can is they don't know they're going to be grateful for whatever you can give mm-hmm. them, and they're going to give back to you tenfold. Yeah. Jess, you've been with us how long? Almost 10 years. I thought so. Mm-hmm. And tell everybody what you do. I'm a senior customer success agent on Ramsey Trusted. All right. There yes. it is. Yes. Senior customer. That's, that's how that works. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'd right. claim that too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You do a great yes. job, and we're honored to Thank have you. you as part of this family. And uh, honored to uh, honor Miss Gabby and uh, your whole family. Is Kat, are you bringing her over for the camera? Good, good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. She'll love this. Girls. Yeah, she's coming up. Here we go. There's Miss Gabby. <laughs> All right. Saturday. That way everybody can meet her on YouTube. <laughs> very cool. Good stuff. Hey, Jessica, thank you very much. Very well done. Proud of you. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Miss Gabby. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> very good stuff. Oh, the adoption and the uh, foster system oh. is a, um, uh, there's such a need, and, and but it's never an easy process. It's always, it's always difficult. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, even when scripture talks about widows and orphans and you're just like, oh, like as a, as a mom with three little ones, like anytime there's stories like that, like what just, just talk through or you, you know, we have families that we know that, that foster and you just hear that's, I mean, there's a level like the ultimate selflessness. I mean, you are giving your life away for a child that didn't choose that story, you know? Yeah. You made me cry. Um, I don't know. So I think it's just, it's just beautiful. So I just commend her and her husband so much because yeah. it's, it's hard. Being a parent's hard, let alone, you know, having a, that other dynamic in there. But then the redemption and the beauty of, you know, these kids and just even with Gabby, I'm like, you know, how her story is completely different because someone chose to do something in a really radical, a radical way. Yeah, very cool. Neat people, neat people. That's what this is about. Open phones. If you want to talk giving, this is your day. It is our annual giving show. The phone number here is 888-825-5225. Rachel, you and I first wrote about this a long, long time ago in your first number one bestseller, Smart Money, Smart Kids. And you've talked about it even more since then. The idea that, uh, that contentment, generosity, a- and um, gratitude are all intertwined, and they're all choices, and they all end up affecting your your wealth building. They all end up affecting your money. Yeah. I mean, I think it's – people sometimes are like, you know, it makes no sense when you guys encourage us to – be giving even while we're getting out of debt or while we're saving up for the emergency fund. Like as we're going through our process to get a solid financial foundation under us, you're wanting us to like let money not go towards the debt and get it paid off faster, but to actually give. And, you know, so like we'll hear those conversations sometimes or those questions by people with people. And, and the answer always is yes, because what, not only what it, what it changes in you, but creating that habit 
of generosity and and the change of your heart of what ends up happening. And and suddenly, you know, when you're generous, gratitude flows through. When you're generous, you realize, gosh, all the stuff I thought I needed, I I really don't. I don't I don't need to be fulfilled by that. You know, there's a joy out of living with that open hand that really does bring a level of contentment that I think in turn allows you to get out of debt even faster and Isn't save that even more. That's and, the weirdest thing. And it's it really it's a is. beautiful formula that uh, I kind of feel like we've cracked in a great way. So yeah. it's wonderful. The triad of generosity, contentment, and generosity, contentment, and gratitude. Dude, the yeah. triad. Yeah. And all of these are things you can just choose to practice. And they, uh, they build on each other and they take you where you want to go with this money stuff. This is the annual giving hour, our giving show here on The Ramsey Show. Thank you for joining us, America. Open phones at 888-825-5225. This is your last day to enter the Ramsey Christmas Cash Giveaway. The giveaway ends tonight at 11.59 p.m. Central Time. So if you haven't yet, go to RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway. Enter for your chance to win the $5,000 grand prize. Of course, no purchase necessary. And of course, you have to be 18 or older to win. That's RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway. Don't forget that our $10 sale is still going on, and you can get our number one best-selling books like all of Rachel's number one best-selling books. There's three of them. And a couple of mine, The Total Money Makeover, number one, $10. Baby Steps Millionaires, my latest number one, $10. And speaking of Total Money Makeover, when you get the book, we often tell people to flip through and read the stories first because that's where the hope is. It's in the stories of people who got free from debt, changed their family tree because they finally dealt with the person in the mirror. These stories are powerful. This stuff works. Be weird. Head on over to RamseySolutions.com and check the $10 sale out. This is our annual giving show, and we're talking to you about your giving story or your receiving story that is inspiring. Open phones here at 888 Leslie is in Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, Leslie. Merry Christmas. Hey, Dave. Merry Christmas, and thank you so much for letting me talk to you today about my story. Well, tell us. We'd love to hear it. About seven years ago, my son Jackson was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. He was eight years old at the time, and we were very blessed. He went through treatment pretty quickly and was pronounced good to go after about nine months. Well, at the end of his journey through that, uh, the hospital referred us to an organization called A Wish With Wings. And they're a wish-granting organization here in Texas, and any kid who goes through a situation like Jackson where they face a life-threatening condition can be granted a wish. And they granted his wish, and he got to meet Dude Perfect, and we got to go to Disney. But that wasn't the most important part. Like, Like you are, Dave, they are dealers in hope. And they gave our family hope. They were just such a sweet organization full of loving people. And when you've got a kid with cancer, even family members and friends don't always know how to help you and how to be there for you. And this organization of people did, and we fell in love with them. So about a year after Jackson finished chemotherapy, he wanted to do something special. So Jackson and I did a 200-mile hike and raised $25,000 from family and friends um, who pledged to Wish With Wings for him doing this hike. How old was he then? He was nine years old. Oh, my god! You did a 200-mile hike one year after chemo with a nine-year-old. And he did it in 14 days. <laughs> this kid's he a is stud. a tough, tough little man. Well, man. now he's a tough, bigger man, but still. Nothing to stop <laughs> this guy. Wow. 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, but still, our family wanted to do more uh, because we just love these people. And we started volunteering. And when they had events, we would go volunteer for those events. I launched a business not long after that, and the business has started doing well. So in the last few years, our family has been able to donate $65,000 to Wish With Wings, and that's enough to grant eight eight wishes. And then my wonderful children have gotten their friends involved. Um, Every time my kid has a birthday party, he's collecting gifts for other kids who are sick, who have cancer. Um, Every time their school has some kind of fundraising opportunity, they plug this organization because they care about them. So you talk a lot, Dave, about changing your family tree. And to me, this changed our family tree because someone gave us hope and taught us that our number one goal should be helping other people have hope. So we are just totally sold out on helping this organization else that is for kids with cancer. Yeah. What's the name of it one more time? A Wish With Wings. A Wish With wish wings. wings. Very cool. Yeah, this whole situation was a force multiplier. One plus one doesn't equal two in this deal. One plus one in, equal, in, ended up equaling 100. Well, and you can take a bad situation and you can – let it gnaw at you or pretend it didn't happen, or you can decide you're going to make it into something better. And while I'll never be grateful that my kid went through cancer, I am so grateful that now we understand what it's like to be the people who are the recipient of bad situations that are not their doing. And it's taught everyone in our family, including both our kids, compassion and love. And we really now in our family budget We put giving as a top line item. There are so many things we just don't need, and Mm -hmm. we thought we did. We would much rather give back. I know that sounds so cheesy and over the top, but it's true because when we see these other families, they don't have it easy like we did. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and when you face something, Leslie, like that, when your child is sick, and you know, and and I'm sure you got the, the fear of what you know. The ultimate fear of what? What if we? What if we lose him? I mean, all I'm sure you go through all those emotions. I can't even imagine. Um, and I think too, it's that perspective that when you realize, wow, he came out of this, and like it, life is so short, and you know, all the stuff that we think is going to make us happy in this life that we go out and try to purchase and experience all this stuff that we're just like go 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 in the consumeristic aspect of our world that we think is going to give us joy. You know, you in turn are like you know, you realize, oh my gosh, no, like it, it truly is this giving back out of this pain and this story that you guys went through. But, but it's this perspective that you have that you're like, okay, it's, you know, we could go buy a bunch of stuff with this money or we can give it. And in your life, like you are, you are putting true value, um, on where value should be. So Leslie, that's absolutely incredible. Well done, Leslie. Merry Christmas to you. What a great giving story. What a great giving story. Yeah, so it turns out pushing buy now, buy now, buy now, filling your cart is probably not what life's about. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Who knew? Sorry, Amazon, but yeah, there oh. we go. Hey, a few weeks ago, we told you our studio sponsors here, Pods Moving and Storage, were going to be entering uh, the giving season. They were going to join us on this whole giving crusade. They're holding a sweepstakes to give away a free move or storage rental for one Ramsey listener. Uh, We're excited to share the winner today. It seemed fitting to do here on The Giving Show because this was up to a $5,000 value. That's generous, Pods Moving. Thank you. Very cool stuff. So congratulations to Andrea K. Andrea recently moved from Apollo Beach, Florida to just a little ways up the road here in Hermitage, Tennessee. Uh, She shared that she's ecstatic to have her move paid for by pods. And hey, who wouldn't be? Welcome to Tennessee, Andrea. And uh, the giveaway is over. If you're looking for a company that does, that will work with you, take care of you, cause you to have a great moving experience, well, the pods moving and storage folks are the people, and they're the only ones that are Ramsey trusted in the moving provider space. Uh, you can check them out at pods.com slash Ramsey. We appreciate their partnership here with us, their sponsorship of the show. One of the reasons you are able to get this show, all the ways you get this show is our sponsors, the advertisers, the people that are with us in the studio sponsorships, a big deal. 
So the Pods Moving and Storage people are great folks. Uh, and we are kind of hard to work with in terms of we don't endorse just anybody. We don't put Ramsey Trusted on just anybody just because they've got the money. Um, and we'd rather just sit here with a studio than the Pods Moving and Storage Studio. But the Pods people are great folks. I personally met with a lot of their leadership team. They do a great job. They give discounts to the military. Those of you in the military, you move all the time. And they give you great discounts. They're a great American company. And... Um, and Andrea Kay just got her move paid for. There you go. That's pretty cool. Very nice. Yeah, moving can be, it can be pricey. So when you just get it paid for, you're like, oh, yeah, it's it, can crazy. Be, it can be really it's pricey nice. if you go with one of those companies that mistreat you. Yeah, it's uh, they mistreat your stuff in the process. Yes. Yeah. Pods moving and storage. Thanks, guys. It's a giving show today here on the Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz is my co-host. You hang with us. We'll be here. Rachel Cruz, co-host on The Ramsey Show. If you want to do your debt-free scream live on the show, visit RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream. We'd love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. That's RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream. of Ramsey Solutions broadcasting from the pods moving in storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for joining us, America. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author three times over. And my daughter is my co-host today as we take your calls. Today, we're talking about giving. This is our annual giving show. If you have a great giving story, some outrageous generosity that you received or that you caused to happen, meaning you gave, hey, we want to hear inspiring giving and generosity stories. The phone number is 888 825 Merry Christmas, America. Tis the season for generosity. This is the place where we celebrate that. We teach you to live like no one else so later you can live and give like no one else. Generous people make us smile. Generous people make our eyes leak. And that's what this show is all about. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Starting off this hour with a giving story, Ben in Birmingham. Merry Christmas, Ben. Merry Christmas. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. So tell us your giving story. So um, this is actually kind of a receiving story that my siblings got. But um, so my parents and our family have been missionaries for the past 20 years. My parents moved overseas uh, in early 2000. But prior to that, um, my dad, while he was in seminary, was working at FedEx, and they met some friends who basically became really close family friends. And <clears throat> as my dad was wor- was working, he kind of made his way up in the ranks at this uh, job where he was working. And when they decided to go overseas, this family friend basically said that because you know my dad was willing to give up his career and kind of go overseas to serve, that they were going to basically purchase uh, cars all of their children whenever they came back for college. So um, there's five of us, five children. (laughs) Wow. So whenever we ended up all coming back, um, he essentially bought a $15,000 to $20,000 car for each of us. Uh, He paid for the insurance for the first year for that car. He paid for basically all the maintenance for the first year on those cars. Um, So kind of over the course of, I would say, probably 10 years as each of our siblings came back. Uh, he ended up probably paying about a hundred thousand dollars worth of, you know, money that he put into buying cars for us to essentially get established and have a way to be, you know, transported while we were back in the country and our parents were still overseas. So it's pretty incredible gift on his part. 
um, and a pretty awesome story that I've actually never really gotten to tell a lot of people. So that's a very mm-hmm. cool. I love that. Yeah, I, I love the way the whole thing went down. It's a friendship, and they just admired your mom and dad, and the you know nothing. You could listen if you want to do something for someone and blow their minds, do something for their kids. Exactly. That, I mean, that touched your mom and dad more than than if they'd have gotten the money directly, or if he'd wrote them a hundred thousand dollar check to underwrite their their ministry or their mission work. Uh, it wouldn't have meant near as much as what he did. Yeah, exactly. And basically, it provided because they were still overseas when we would come back for college. So essentially, it provided us transportation to get to our school uh, school during the semesters, our summer jobs during the summer to basically go and see our, our extended family in different parts of the country. Um, Cause without that, I mean, my parents definitely couldn't have afforded to buy cars for us whenever we needed to come back to the States for school. Yeah, um, absolutely. So pretty tremendous, tremendous gift on his part. For sure. Okay, um, Ben, this might be a weird question in the middle of your giving story, but yeah. one's, some calls we've taken on the show, some people have a really hard time receiving gifts. So how did your parents, what was kind of their posture when this friend came forward and said, Hey, I want to, I want to give your kids cars when they come home. Um, you know, like, were they, was it a hundred percent just, they accepted it in this humble spirit or did they have any level of like, Oh man, we wish we couldn't do it. We can't do that for our kids and that receiving, you know, cause I want to speak to that in a, in a, in encouraging people to receive the gift. Cause sometimes, sometimes I think people struggle receiving as well. Yeah. I think it was honestly, kind of easy for them because i think that they knew that that was something that they weren't going to be able to provide for us whenever we came back to the states um so in a way it was kind of maybe a relief for them and kind of a a burden off of their shoulders in terms of having to provide for their kids in that in that circumstance for Um, sure so i think it was honestly kind of (laughs) kind of a relief for them. yeah no i love that that's that's what i pray you know people's heart is but i think sometimes people need to hear that to say hey it's okay to receive and you can do that. Like it doesn't speak to who you are uh, if you're the one given something. So, um, so I love that. That's so great. Very cool, Ben. Thank you for sharing that story, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Merry Christmas. Good stuff. Open phones here. 888 825 Patricia is in Connecticut. Hi, Patricia. Tell us your giving story. Merry Christmas, by the way. Hi, Merry Christmas, Dave and Rachel. So good to talk to you guys. You too. Thank you. So I just, um, I was actually the recipient of outrageous generosity that I wanted to be able to share with you guys. And I haven't really told many people this story um, because I felt like it wasn't my story to tell uh, since I was the recipient. But it's been two years and I think it's time for everyone to know that the business that I run was given to me um, in October of 2020. So I was given a small business, which is actually a self-serve frozen yogurt shop. Oh, wow. So how did that come about? (laughs) So, yep, so it goes back a little bit further. Um, I got laid off from corporate America back in 2014, um, and I decided I didn't want to go back to that. So I picked up a part-time job at the local Froyo shop um, right in town um, in November of 2015. Um, And then my husband and I actually started the baby steps January of 2016. And then we finished our baby steps. We paid off all our debt. And then somewhere along the line, the the owners had asked me, because I was still working at the frozen yogurt shop, um, to purchase the store or they had numerous stores. So they, you know, had, it it had been discussed, Um, but they also knew I didn't borrow money. So uh, I would always tell them no, because I couldn't afford to own a business, of course. Um, And then COVID, of course, came Um, in April 2020. We had to close the shop down. So I was actually unemployed. Um, It was self-serve frozen yogurt, so it just wasn't sustainable, (sighs) which was devastating. Um, But we actually did reopen in July of 2020. Um, So my bosses decided to reopen, and that's what we did. Um, And then... A month later, they one of the bosses pulled me aside into the into the back kitchen, which is never a good sign, right? I was nervous, um, and uh, he had asked me if I wanted the store, if I wanted to, you know, take the store, be the store owner. And I said, I don't really know what you mean. What does that mean? And he said, We're going to give you the store, 
but you're going to get this store with equipment that is 11 years old. They've been in business for 11 years. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I want to hear the rest of this, and I'm up on commercial because I don't want to run this into the ground. It's too good. Hang with us through the commercial, Patricia. We'll hear the rest of the story here on the annual giving show on The Ramsey Show. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. CHM is not health insurance, but it is Christians helping other Christians by sharing each other's medical bills. The medical bill sharing from CHM was exactly the way the website described it. There were no surprises, no bait and switch, no hidden agenda. CHM did everything they said they would by sharing all of our eligible needs. We like that it's a nonprofit ministry and that we were being better stewards of our money, all while helping other families. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Get started today and check us out at chministries.org backslash budget. That's chministries.org backslash budget. We absolutely believe in it. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. This is our annual giving show here on The Ramsey Show. We're taking your calls with giving stories, receiving stories. This is all about generosity. Live like no one else, and later you can live and give like no one else. We were in the middle of Patricia's story in Connecticut. Uh, She left corporate America, went to work for a frozen yogurt shop, and they offered to sell it to her a couple of times. And then during COVID, after going back to work, Uh, The owner walks in one day and says they are offering to give it to her. Now, let's pick that story up there, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty much how it went. Um, So, like I said, they offered to give me the store, um, and the store had been in business for about 11 years already. So, of course, the equipment, you know, the machines, all that stuff was 11 years old. Um, So that happened in about August. And sure enough, October 14th of 2020, we closed on the business. Um, I started, you know, an LLC. I opened new bank accounts. um, And I did all that. And we actually closed. And here I am, you know, two and a half years later as a small business owner in a very small town, um, but enjoying every second of it. So, Wow. What do you what yeah. prompted them to do that? Uh I like I said, they'd offered a few times. I think, you know, when, when customers would come in, I was always there. So customers would say, Oh, is this your store? And I would say, No, no, no. But they would always say, Well, you treat it like your store because I had so much passion for what I was doing. And it sounds silly. People think it's silly. But, you know, at my interview with, with the store owners at, at when I started, I had told you know I had told them I treat every job like it's a career. Um, so I'm going to have a lot of passion. I love being around people. Of course, there's, you know, our clientele is generally kids. Uh, so I think that after COVID, there was a lot of restrictions. Um, and they actually own a hardware store in the same plaza. Uh, so they were really, you know, we all know everyone was stuck home during COVID, so they were just slammed over there. I mean, they were every day, all day. Everybody was home and at the hardware store. So I think it was just time to to figure something out to let it go. Ah, okay. All right. But through Mm. your diligence of being so excellent, you know, at your job, you're the person that shined through to to receive that, which which is amazing. It really is. And it's been amazing. And it's more than just a small business here. You know, it's definitely a family business. I'm actually looking inside the store right now. My husband's covering for me while I'm on the phone with you guys. Uh, My mom does all our shopping at Costco every day. So, you know, my retired mom gets to go to Costco every day. 
basically a joy for her. And uh, my son does all the heavy lifting when orders come in or takes the garbage out at night. You know, I have a bunch of great employees also. But um, it's the customers that really make it just really worthwhile. It's, it's definitely what I feel I was called to do. Oh, I think you were. Yeah, you're the backbone of America. Small business people like you, that's what makes this entire place run. It is not large corporate goobs, and it's not the government. It's people like you that cause make this country great. The free enterprise system causes people like you to shine, and people like the former owners that were generous to you to shine. Yeah, absolutely. That's incredible. Just hand it over a business. Yeah, pretty cool. That's awesome. Very, very cool stuff. Hey, Patricia, thank you for sharing that. Merry Christmas to you. We appreciate you hanging out with us today. This is our annual giving show. Our question of the day comes from blinds.com. Find out for yourself why blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. So today's question comes from Jim in Florida. I'm struggling in giving recently because I have plans that I need to accomplish, buy a house and get my small business off the ground. I am a generous person, but I feel like I'm being cheap when it comes to giving or when my wife gets to get something for her friends or sister. I don't feel good while deep inside I know that I am. I'm kind of confused if I'm changing to a jerk and a selfish person, but honestly, I'm doing it for my family, so I need some help. Jim, you know, I mean, I think that there's a reality that when you have your bases covered in your home and with your family and the needs are provided for it allows that generosity to flow even greater uh, with with maybe not as much stress. But this doesn't sound like it's a, I need to take care of my family first. I mean, yes, you want to be able to buy a house for sure, get my small business off the ground. You know, but this, I would say too though, Jim, that, that giving, it doesn't have to be extravagant. And so starting to give a little until you can give a lot, right? Like if there are things in your life that you're wanting to do, we all have that. But that doesn't mean you can't do both, is what I would say. Yeah. It sounds like um, that the uh, what's bothering you more than the actual giving um, uh, to the sister or to the friends or whatever by your wife is that it feels like that's blocking these other goals. And it's not. That's the reality. So the way you can overcome that is just budget for it. Just say, we're going to put a line item in the budget, you and your wife, that agree, we agree on our entire budget, but we're going to agree on this is the amount that sh- that your wife has for friends and sister. And uh, don't go over that. And then you can use the rest of the budget and see that you are able to accomplish your goals of doing stuff in the business or saving up for a home or whatever. You'll see that it, you know, if you budget a hundred bucks or something, it's not going to keep you from doing those other things. But this idea that it's not got any limits on it and um, you're not in agreement when she's doing these things, that's where the rub is. So if you were in agreement and it had a reasonable limit and you were in agreement on the limit, on the amount that, that sh- you know your wife has for these two activities, sister and friends or whatever you want to call it, uh, th- then you'd be okay with it. Uh, but it's just the ambivalence of it that is... Uh, that's probably throwing you because you're you're obviously a person who uh, who plans, but this is not something. It doesn't make you a bad person to say I'm going to accomplish some goals. That that's not a bad person. Now, what we do teach and have taught from the very beginning around Ramsey, and I think it's good to get into this a little bit, is you want a baseline of giving that is your normal rhythm in your life uh, every month. And then you have, when you are, are prospering and you've got extra money above that normal budgeted giving that's just flying around, and you have a choice between buying, you know, another thingy and doing some generosity, then you can change and, and do some generosity with that surplus money, that extra money that's from prospering. But when you're first starting out, 
Uh, we teach people to limit their giving to their baseline normal giving. Now, for those of us that are uh, Christians, evangelical Christians, we teach and believe within our faith to give a tithe, a tenth of our income to your local church. That's your baseline. That's your normal rhythm of giving. You don't stop doing that. And uh, above the tithe is called offerings, and all throughout Scripture, offerings come from surplus, from prospering. And so they would come after you're out of debt, after you've taken care of your own household. And, and so this idea that you're supposed to give away the rent money uh, and your, your kids are become homeless because you were generous, that's absurd. And it's not scriptural for those of you that are Christians, by the way. Take care of your own household first or you're worse than an unbeliever. That's scriptural. And that's not lacking in generosity. It doesn't make you a bad person. Quite the opposite, it makes you a good person. Yeah, absolutely. So we start with taking care of our house. Then we can expand and say, we're going to take care of people outside of our house. And then we can expand and say, we're going to change our family tree. And then we can expand and say, let's change our whole community. But that's that all comes from the surplus above the normal rhythm of giving. And I think you need to put a rhythm of giving gem in your budget for your wife to have some freedom without being worried about you being upset about it. This is the Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author. My daughter is my co-host today. This is our annual giving show, the show where we talk about the power of generosity. If you've got a great story that's inspiring on where you've given or received, we would love to hear it. And you can call us at 888-825-5225. Speaking of giving, uh, this show's free for you on podcast, on YouTube, it's free for you on 680 radio stations all across America. Tens of millions of you join us every week. Thank you. We appreciate that. We are grateful for you. Uh, but it's time for you to give back. <laughs> you need to go and uh, leave a rating, a five-star rating, at uh, wherever you listen. And don't leave a one-star. They're not valuable at all. That's why they call them one-star. Put a five-star on there. Thank you. We appreciate that. And you need to subscribe. It helps other people be notified by all the algorithms and, uh, oh, the various things that the uh, wonderful people on the Internet do to uh, allow you to know that these things exist. It's caused by you subscribing. So subscribe, leave a, uh, a rating, and share the show. Tell people where you listen to it on talk radio. Send a link to your podcast off of Spotify or Apple or wherever it is or YouTube. Say, hey, you ought to check these guys out. The information is real, and it's not, you know, we're not on here whining and crying and angry every day. We're here helping people. And so it's kind of an unusual show in that regard. You ought to spread the, spread the word. We ought to need, get more of this kind of thing out there in this world today. So open phones at 888-825-5225. All of our callers today will be getting the Live and Give box, which has in it the Total Money Makeover book, the uh, Baby Steps Millionaire's book, and a one-year membership to Financial Peace University. This uh, allows you to break this up and give it away, a book, a book, a book, uh, a class, however you want to do it, or use the whole thing yourself, the Live and Give box. Uh, by the way, if you want to buy it, it's only 99 bucks at Ramsey Solutions, and that's about 50 60 bucks under what all of those items retail for, so it's a good deal. The Live and Give Box. One of our traditions on the giving show that we do is we bring on a few of our Ramsey team members, a few of uh, the 1,100 folks in this building who all practice generosity at different levels and have great stories. But uh, no question about it, Nathan is with us, and Nathan's got a great generosity story. Hey, Nathan, how are you? 
Good, Dave. How are you doing? Good. Merry Christmas. Same to you. Merry Christmas. A little nerve-wracking putting on that mi microphone, isn't it? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing good. Thank You're you. going to make it. So tell, tell us your story, man. So so my my uh, mentor is a guy by the name of uh, Stan Fries, super nice guy. I worked with him for uh, 10 years, and 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 he... It, it's so like over the years, he's just been so uh, generous with me. But there, there was one instance that it that it completely floored me. So, about uh, ten years ago, I was I was uh, working for him, and I was actually uh, dating. Um, um, she is actually now my wife, mm -hmm. uh, Lauren, over here, mm -hmm. and and she and and so I wanted to propose to her, and I was just just casually uh talking to uh stan about it one day saying because you know because back then uh this was actually before dave and so i was very stupid with money so i didn't have the money to buy a ring for for uh lauren and so i so i was just kind of kind of uh venting to him about it one day didn't really think anything of it and then probably about two three days later he actually drags me to one of the conference rooms. He says, "Come here, come here, come here." So, so, so we, we, we uh, go to one of the conference rooms, and he uh, gives me a box, and he says, "Here you go." And I said, "Okay." So I open it up, and it's a r really nice ring, and he just tells me, "You marry that girl right now." Oh my God! Whoa! <laughs> Just like that. Yep. Yep. So he gave you, he ring. gave you the engagement ring. Yes, he did. Wow, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, he, he was um he, um um because I was just floored and I said, Stan, did you, did you buy this? And he said, Oh no 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 no, I I um I upgraded my my uh, wife's ring so you can have that one. And I'm like, Oh my gosh! Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow, that's very cool. Yeah. So, how tempted have you been to do something like that for somebody now that you're out of debt and doing well? Oh, we're we just we just try to find just you know, like every opportunity. My wife's v very good with uh, discernment, and and so like when when she tells me we need to to you know to give somebody money mm -hmm. or to to you know to help them out, mm -hmm. uh, help them move. I always listen to her and say, okay, you, you know what you're doing. So. Smart man. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. I was like, smart man. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, that's what I love about the show, though, is I'm like all the different ways that people step into people's lives, right, and intersect them in their stories, where they're at, and be able to, to help, right? And even something like a proposal to be able to say, hey. Go marry that here, girl. Yeah, here's the ring and all that. So Stan, Stan, well done. Is it still the ring you have? Your yep. wife's sitting over here. Yes, yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. There it is right there. I like it. So great. <laughs> All right. Nathan, how long have you been with Ramsey? Since uh, January. All right. And tell everybody what you do here. I am a, a, um, I'm a, a senior uh, writer with the uh, content team. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, thank you, brother, for sharing that. You did a great job, and that's a wonderful giving story, a wonderful Absolutely generosity awesome. story. Yes. Thanks, Very Nathan. Cool. Merry Christmas, y'all. Very so good great. stuff. Fun, fun, fun. That's about as good as it gets. I love it. Hey, open phones here at 888-825-5225. Teresa wrote in uh, from the Baby Steps community on Facebook group. If you didn't know, there's an official Baby Steps community with, uh, I think it's over a million people in it now on Facebook. Uh, that's the official Baby Steps community. Ramsey community. I don't know. It's called something like that. Today, a family member reached out asking for help. They're truly struggling receiving food stamps, but we're desperate for items you cannot buy with food stamps. In less than an hour, I was able to go through my stockpile and fill a giant IKEA bag with every possible item they may need. I'm gifting them toilet paper, cleaning supplies, toothpaste, deodorant, napkins, air freshener, laundry soap, dryer sheets, tissue, trash bags, and about a dozen other household necessities. On my way over, I'll be picking up dog food, a gas gift card, and some gifts they can give each other for Christmas. I'm so thankful for being debt-free and that a bunch of recent overtime is allowing me to help them without it impacting my budget at all. I'm finally in the season of giving. 
and I couldn't be more thankful for that. Oh, I love that. Isn't that great? And even just that, a little bit of that convenience where you're like, all right, I'm going to just go through my pantry and see what I have here and be able to fill up, yeah, fill up a bag and be able to give it away. Well, and you can double up. I mean, you know, a lot of people that, you know, they, they, do the Costco thing and they buy like six jars of yeah. peanut butter. Yeah. And so they've got plenty, you know, so you're not going to go without. That's right. It, That's it, right. It works out, you know, it's, it's, uh, but just to be able to do that spur of the moment mm-hmm. and catch somebody. That. Katie says for so many years, I hated December, my husband's son and sister's birthday plus Christmas. I could never do what I wanted this year. I'm taking five of us to Florida to my parents for Christmas doing house projects for them while there. Everyone can have what they need and some of what they want for Christmas. Birthdays, plenty for giving, but the hardest part is keeping the list straight. Checked the bank a few minutes ago because it felt too spendy, and I had only spent 5% of what was allotted. Yeah. That's weird, but good weird. <laughs> Keep going. It gets fun. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? It takes the stress off of the holidays. Um, uh, one of the biggest elements of stress yeah. is the financial threat of a hangover, a financial hangover that lasts till May when you've got your money in under the name control. of generosity, right? Yeah, too. all so in like, the name of yeah. generosity. So that I, I hated December, she says. Yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. I completely get that. This is the annual giving show here on The Ramsey Show. It's our annual giving show, and all day we've gotten to hear some incredible stories of outrageous generosity, this stuff that gets us fired up. It never gets old. Guys, if you've learned anything from the stories we're hearing today, I hope you've learned that giving is the most fun you can have with money. And you'll never have more fun than helping someone else change their life. And one way you can do that is the Live and Give box. Everyone today has been getting the Live and Give box that calls in with a giving story. This is the box we gave everyone, and today we're offering it, I thought it was $99. This is even more, $79.99. That's $20 off a normal. That's like half price for these items. It's an entire year of Financial Peace University, a copy of the Total Money Makeover, and a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires. If there's someone in your life who needs this, and there is, then uh, you give it to them. You're going to show them hope. You're going to show them freedom. They might be the ones calling in on the next giving show because you changed their life. So get the live and give box at RamseySolutions.com. Super sale on this thing, $79.99 today. Uh, You'll get it in time for Christmas if you call call in today or or click on the website today and get it. Nobody calls in anymore. And again, that's RamseySolutions.com slash box. You know, we used to have people call customer care and order stuff. I bet there's still a few that do. There probably is. But, um, but majority go on the internet. Yeah. I mean, I, it's just kind of a foreign thing. The internet. I said plural. That's what John Deloney always says. Yeah. The internets. The internets. <laughs> like there's two of them. I know. <laughs> Feels like there's a lot. I don't know. There's a lot of them. <laughs> All right. Andrea is with us in San Diego. Andrea, happy Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Dave and Rachel. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Tell us your giving story, please. I have a receiving generosity story. Um, My husband and I got married last year, November in 2021, and we went through Financial Peace University together, and um, we're on Baby Step 3B. And he is active duty military and um, is deployed this year. Mm -hmm. So last month on our um, one-year wedding anniversary since he's gone, 
I invited uh, one of my best girlfriends to go out to dinner with me. I said, come to dinner with me. This is, you know, my treat. Um, Let's just have a good meal and good conversation. You know, get whatever you want. Don't read the menu from right to left. And so we went out to dinner um, at a really nice restaurant, the the type of restaurant where the manager is, you know, roaming around, um, talking to people, making sure everything's satisfactory. So the manager comes over to our table and he asks, you know, um, if we're visiting from out of town, because it was a pretty touristy area. And we said, no, we live here. And so he said, oh, you know, what's what's the occasion then? And I said, well, it's my wedding anniversary, um, but I'm just here with my friends because my husband is away for work. And he um, had a pretty good guess. He said, oh, is your husband in the military? And I said, yeah, because um, mm-hmm. it's a big military community here. And he said, oh, you know, I'm sorry that um, you guys are apart, but, you know, hopefully we can um, make your meal enjoyable. And he asked me what what year wedding anniversary it was. And I just, you know, held up one finger and his jaw dropped. And he said, oh, my gosh, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And he said, you know, which dessert on the menu were you girls eyeing, you know? And so we looked at one and picked one. I can't even remember what it is now. And so, of course, they they bring out that dessert, which was really nice. And uh, my friend and I are finishing our meal. And a waiter came over, um, the server from the next section over. It wasn't our server. And he comes up and um, taps me on the shoulder. And he said that the couple sitting in the next section over, the table behind us, overheard me telling the manager that my husband was deployed and it was my first wedding anniversary and they had paid for our entire meal. I love it. As they should have. Well played. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I thought you were going to say it was the manager that just like, you know, picked it up and just said we got it. But it was another customer there that yeah. that did that. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, we. I kind of thought when the manager was asking like, oh, which dessert did you like? You know, I, it, I thought that maybe they were going to comp the dessert. Right, and right. And then my friend and I were just so shocked and luckily the couple was still there they were like finishing up and so I was able to turn around and I just said thank you so much for you know your generosity and they they said no thank you thank your husband for his Mm -hmm. service and um yeah we I didn't really get to talk with them much but I asked you know if they were visiting or local and they said that they were visiting on vacation and they were flying home the next day and and that was it and yeah, just like the spontaneity and like the impact, like I feel like that is just has such a bigger impact on me than it did them. And it's like that makes my first anniversary like so memorable. <laughs> Absolutely. How long have you been married now? Uh, well, last month was our one year anniversary. Oh, this so just happened. Months. This just yeah, happened. This just happened. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I wow. love that. And I love the picking up the bill at restaurants. Dave, you're really good at that. Like if you see someone you know, but I think cuz I've been the recipient of that, not to that extent um Andrea like yeah, your when your anniversary with your husband deployed. I mean like that's just like over the top, but anytime someone does anything that you think, "Oh my gosh, like it it is it's so shocking to be on the receiving end and especially with you in all those circumstances." Like that feel that's just I mean that like literally makes you smile for weeks and weeks to, just thinking about that. Yeah. Very yes, cool. Absolutely. Very cool. Hey, and do tell your husband we we appreciate him too. We love you guys. We appreciate what you do for America and um, all the men and women like him and like you and the sacrifice that you do for him um, being uh, at work, in quotes. And if it's out of San Diego, then that could mean a whole lot of things. Yep, that's right. So, um, yeah, wow. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Open phones at 888-825-5225. I had the honor of doing some things with SEAL teams and um, uh, of course they're based out of San Diego and uh, when they're at work uh, <laughs> that means they're downrange uh, it's it's yeah that, that's when it's getting real so somebody somebody is uh, some bad guy somewhere is in trouble that's what that means so uh, it's pretty serious and these men and women they they are uh, their level of uh, sacrifice, their level oh, of yeah. honor, their level of training is otherworldly. It is it's pretty amazing. So, anytime you've got the opportunity to bless someone in uniform, uh, please do it. Uh, I don't care if it's a police uniform, a firefighter's uniform, or a set of scrubs. 
sitting there or certainly a military uniform. Mm -hmm. You just reach over and do that every single time. And, um, you know, I watched a guy the other day. Somebody beat me to it. I was in a nice restaurant, and this guy walked in with a uh, a Vietnam veteran's hat on, ca- oh, just, just wow. a ball cap, just a ball cap. And um, he was uh, elderly. I mean, mm-hmm. this guy was he, he was uh, had I had served early in Vietnam, probably. Um, and uh, but I mean, it wasn't thirty seconds before people started lining up to buy that table's food. Wow. You know, I mean, wow. it didn't take but a second because you could just look at that guy and go, "That's a guy that needs to be honored." Yeah, you know? absolutely. And, uh, Pretty cool stuff. And there, when, there's something that happens, Rachel. You're like, right, when somebody buys your dinner like that, regardless of whether you're in a position of honor like that or not, mm-hmm. um, you're just uh, maybe a position of need, uh, whatever it is. But there's something about food and that, that transaction that makes the receiving person feel very special. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I know. I hate to even say this story because it's nothing compared to the call we just had. But when we we had been married about three months, had moved to Nashville, I guess it'd been about four months. And we were starting off our jobs, Winston and I, I mean, in our early 20s, just doing it. We had our budget and we couldn't really go out to eat. Like, you know, we were in the Franklin area um, living in outside of Nashville. And we we kind of were like, okay, we can go out to dinner like twice a week is kind of like our rhythm. And so we went out on a big date night to to Puckett's downtown Franklin yeah. uh, one night. And some friends that we knew, family friends, they were a little bit older uh, than us. And again, we had just been married about four, four or five months. And I remember we got waters because we didn't want to pay for a drink. Like, I mean, we were like in that, that season of life. And they paid for our meal. And I felt like I won the lottery. I was like, it's not coming out of our budget. Like, oh my gosh. But yeah, there's just, it takes you off guard. Yeah. There's and something. There's something that makes you feel it. special. I, I mean, know. It's a pretty cool. But you thing. do that great. You always are paying for people's meals at restaurant, and I just love that. I I think it's just a it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing. Fun stuff. It's great. It's our annual giving show here on the Ramsey Show. Man, I love generous people. They make us smile. They make our eyes leak. This is the Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving and storage studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth, do work that they actually love, and create real, amazing relationships. This day's shows are dedicated to giving, to generosity. It's our annual giving show in honor of Christmas time. Merry Christmas, America. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, we're glad you're with us. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. And we're taking uh, your calls all about giving. We want to hear your stories that are inspiring about giving and about receiving generosity is the best thing you can do with money. It's the most fun you'll ever have with money. And we teach you around here that you will sacrifice to win. You will live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else. So check it out. We want to hear your story. Open phones here at 888 Jay in Washington, D.C. is with us. Merry Christmas, Jay. How are you? Hey, Merry Christmas, Dave and Rachel. It's a real pleasure to talk with both of you. You too. Tell so, us your giving so story. I, yes, sir. So I'd briefly like to share today my family's progression of our generosity over the past couple of Christmases and what we have planned this year. Um, But first, my why. So my three siblings and I were raised by a single mother who's a real hero to all of us. All four of us are successful adults, and so I have a real heart for helping single moms however I can. Over the years, of course, 
we were helped by family and friends and strangers uh, in many ways. And so I feel compelled to do the same. Uh, in 2020, my wife's and my first Christmas after completing Baby Step 3, we were finally in a position that we could expand our generosity to beyond our church. And we opted to find a deserving stranger to help. So I, I chose a diner-type restaurant a few days before Christmas, walked in and asked for the manager. I asked him if he had any single moms working that day who could use a little hand up uh, at, with a money gift for the holiday. Now, someone came to his mind right away, and he was able to help me hand an envelope with a little over $200 to a grateful mom with two little ones. Mm-hmm. Last year, uh, last year, my family and I became a little more strategic than that. I called a different restaurant about a month before Christmas and asked for the manager um, and if she had any single moms who could benefit from a monetary gift there. She immediately thought of one mom who had recently successfully completed rehab. The manager and I schemed for a, a weekend shift uh, for when this particular waitress was working, and my wife and my kids and I visited that restaurant for a drink and a, and a slice of pie that afternoon. And we wanted to be anonymous, but evidently every employee in the place knew, uh, besides the waitress, uh, that we were about to give the gift. Uh, they were all smiling and watching us the whole time. And about 15 minutes uh, into our visit, we left the waitress a $400 tip and walked out. So this year, Dave uh, and Rachel, I'm a public school administrator, and I get daily reminders of how blessed my family and I are through the course of serving my school community. And unfortunately, this year I I learned uh, recently that two siblings who attend my school lost their father to an accident. Mm -hmm. And our school team reached out to this newly widowed mom to see how we could support. And she shared that, among other things, she was struggling with finances and and because her husband handled all the financial matters. Mm. Uh, I immediately thought that my family and I could personally gift them a, a subscription to Ramsey Plus that she would really benefit from the uh, financial coaching aspect of that. Mm-hmm. So I, I called your company, and Rick, one of your longtime agents, shout out to Rick, answered. Um, I explained the situation on behalf of the company He generously gifted the year of Ramsey Plus to me to give to the widow. I'm really grateful for your company for stepping in to help. And, of course, my family and I have been talking about how we will outrageously give this year, and it will go to our widow and and our school community. We have to help our single moms, especially those who are widowed. All these these ladies are superheroes. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, they are. They, they, They do wear a cape, every one of them. And um, most of them work multiple jobs uh, just, Absolutely. just to get by. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very real thing. So you've touched a nerve. You really have. That's fabulous. Well done, Jay. Thank you. I love that, Jay. Thank you. Thank you so much for the inspiration. Yeah. And uh, we, we will continue. Amen. Keep it up, brother. Merry Christmas to Absolutely. you. Very cool. Very what an amazing well heart, Jay, you have, you and your sweet family. I'm like, that's and I love the intentionality of calling the restaurant, talking to them, right? Like you kind of build it up and then his kids, Jay's kids, you know, going along on that as well. Like there's there's just life-changing things playing well, out all you, around. Well, if you can more carefully identify the target, you're yeah. more likely to hit the target. Yes. Random things. You kind of get, sometimes when you're doing this kind of weird generosity stuff, you, you, you get a little nervous and you start kind of thrashing around and <laughs> get a little bit random and sometimes you miss the target. Yeah, you know, you, yeah. it's not your, your giving doesn't do what it what you kind of hoped it would do. Uh, but in his case, he's being very selective and helping someone go. Okay, to that's love that. that's a that's a person uh, that okay. Now I've got that dialed in. That's that's very cool. And you know what? I'll I'll brag on Rick, our guy here, because I know he's talking about over in our uh, Ramsey Concierge team and um, uh, all of you folks out there that own and run businesses. Uh, that's a leadership lesson right there. Uh, you know, the way our team is led, they are one of the, uh, the, you know, we teach them to have a self-employed mentality, treat this place like they own it, treat the books that you sell, like you own them, treat the, uh, the, you know, the stuff around here, like, you know, that, like you own it. And Rick treated that like he owned it. He said, that's somebody that, that this is something that if I owned this company, I would give that. And so he gave that. And oh, by the way, if you're running the company, your leadership style needs to equip and empower your people to do that. To be generous. To yeah. be generous without asking. They don't need mm-hmm. to check in. It's just do the right thing. And, you know, he didn't give away $10,000. He gave away one 
one year membership to Financial Peace University. We'll be okay. You know, <laughs> it's okay. And so it's he, he's equipped, he's empowered to do that. Mm-hmm. All through people all through this place are, as a matter of fact, they're more than that. They're, it, it's like we demand that they do it. It's part of their job to be generous and to take care of people as one offs. Now, if you call in and just, you know, and if you call in and make up a lie and try to mess with us, we'll charge you double. Okay. So, <laughs> so we do, we do that too. Cause we treat it like we own it. We don't want to be conned, but we do want to be generous. There's a difference, right? I mean, that's the yeah, thing. No, so, totally, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, way to go, Rick. That's, that's very, very cool stuff. That's mm-hmm. how it's supposed to be done. So you can, uh, my, I, my point of that is, is if those of you that run small businesses out there and lots of you do, your entree leaders, entree leaders, meaning you entrepreneurs and leaders, you can magnify your generosity just by empowering your team That's to right. do it. And because uh, they have more touch points sometimes than you do. So it gives you a lot of ways to do it. This is an annual giving show here on The Ramsey Show. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we do our annual giving show. We are taking calls from those of you telling your giving stories. We're less than two weeks away from Christmas. The Ramsey Christmas Cash Giveaway ends tonight at midnight, and by the time we're done, we will have given away thousands of dollars. Why do we do that here at Ramsey? Because of one of the things I've learned is, is that outrageous generosity changes me. Logically, you'd think that being unselfish makes you a generous person, but the opposite is true. Being a generous person changes your heart, and then you become less selfish. And that affects every area of your life. Unselfish people are better husbands, better wives, better friends, better parents, better employers, better employees. People just want to be around you more. So when you're fired up because you're working the baby steps, it's changing your life, it is time to start giving. Start developing that habit. And while you're over there signing up for the free money, get the $10 sale on the Total Money Makeover books, the Baby Steps Millionaire books, all of Rachel's books. You've got hope. Don't keep it to yourself. Spread it around. Go to RamseySolutions.com. we got the best deals running right now, so it's easy for you to find outrageously generous gifts for the season. Check them out, RamseySolutions.com. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Harmony is in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Merry Christmas, Harmony. Merry Christmas. I am thrilled to talk to you. It is such an honor to participate in the giving show. Well, thank you. Tell us your story. Okay, so my giving story started a few years back. I got a really nice bonus at work. And I I love my job, and I know I'm good at it, but I also know I am nothing without my team. So I wanted to share. And it was kind of a little conundrum because I wasn't really supposed to advertise that I'd gotten a bonus. I don't think there were a whole lot of them given out that year. And I couldn't just give them money because I don't think that would have been appropriate. So I did my secret Santa idea. I just made up some envelopes with cash in them and the person's name and said, from Secret Santa, Thank you for all you do. And I snuck around and I slipped them under the office doors. And it was just so much fun that I decided right then and there that I would just go ahead and add a line item to my budget so I could have a secret Santa fund and do it again. So I did it again next year. And then I also noticed how great our janitors are where I work. And, of course, everything we do would come to a screeching halt if they didn't do their jobs. Amen. And they're just always so friendly and cheerful, and they say hi to everybody. 
They knock on every door of every office every day and empty the trash and all the other things that janitors do. So I decided they would be a part of it, too. And then the most amazing thing that happened was that it went viral. One of the janitors sent an email to the all employees distribution list that said, thank you, Secret Santa, whoever you are. And people started asking her, what was she talking about? So she took a picture of the envelope and sent that out. And then, uh, yeah. (laughs) So this is like um, the entire staff gets these emails. And how many is that, Harmony? How many many people uh, are getting this? About five, about 500. Okay, okay. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so, so after about a day or so, someone replied to the email chain saying, I got one of those too, and then another one, me too. And these weren't the ones that I had given. Um, uh, and Secret Santa stuff started magically appearing all over the facility. Oh, my gosh, um, Harmony. Sounds like Santa got in on it. I can't believe it. It was so fun, and I can't wait to see what happens this year Um, because we're not quite – we work right up until the day before um, Christmas Eve, so it's going to probably be next week when when things really – I'm expecting to see it again this year. Wow. And, you know, it's right what you said. This is like like therapy for me. I get so much more out of this than I would from any stuff or even any experiences that I could buy with the same money. Well, the fabulous thing Um, is, is you inspired somebody else to start doing it too and didn't even know it. it, I think it was, it was her email that, you know, really got the word out. I wasn't, I was tight lipped. I no no one knew um, unless some of the the recipients that I gave um, had said something to somebody else. But um, then, you know, when this email went out, that was really, um what what got it going i think that's so perfect that's awesome well done well done great story so the original um secret santa if there is one is a guy named larry stewart from kansas city and um we ended up connecting with him having him on the show several times developed a friendship with him he's passed away of cancer since but larry was a quite an interesting bird he um was down on his luck decades ago uh, didn't have any money, was hungry, pulled his pickup into a diner in Mississippi, a little meat and three diner, went in, went up to the counter and sat down and ate. And uh, with the idea that when he finished, he was just going to act like he forgot his wallet mm. and just try to talk his, because he had to have food. He was hungry. And uh, he started talking to the, the cook behind the counter who turned out to be the owner of the diner. We find out later in the story. Um, and the guy realized that he was broke and kind of was running a scam. And uh, he, he walked around behind him and reached down on the floor and said, uh, hey, I think you dropped this and handed him a $20 bill. So he was able to pay. For, he gave him the money, yeah, in other words. Yeah. So he was able to pay for his dinner. The, Larry never forgot that. He later goes on to be got in the cable TV business and goes on to become a multimillionaire. And... Um, started a tradition of Secret Santa, and nobody knew who he was. And he would go to areas of the country where something had happened. He was in New Orleans after Katrina. He was in um, after a shooting in, around Columbine. He was there after that. He was in New York City after 911. And he would walk around in a Santa Claus suit with his friends who were policemen, uh, would go with him, and he would give away tens of thousands of dollars. He'd oh walk up and just hand people $100 bills, $200 bills, $300 bills, $400. And he would walk around all day long just on the street and just mm. randomly going up to people and just going, ho, 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 and who are you? And he, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And he, hand, and he handed out, over his life, he handed out millions of dollars wow. as Secret wow. Santa. And so when he got sick, he created the Secret Santa kit to franchise it. So that <laughs> other people going. could do it, and you could go to his. I, I don't even know if the website's still up. He died several years ago, but the website was like secretsanta.com or something, and you could go there and get, you know, learn how to be him. Wow. Because finally, the no one knew who it was. It was a big mystery. All the media was trying to track him down, trying to figure out what it was, and he kept it a secret for many years. The Kansas City Star finally, in his own hometown, tracked him down, figured out who it was, and so he came out when he got sick. He came out and told everybody who he mm. was. 
and start telling his whole story. And we had him on the air, and uh, he was just a piece of work. He was a lot of fun. But he would dress up as Santa Claus and go into the areas of town where people were struggling uh, or go to towns where something had happened, and they just needed encouragement. And it wasn't like $5. I mean, he's giving yeah, away hundreds. hundreds of dollars Gosh. and $100 bills and tens of thousands of dollars in a given trip in a given day. It was very cool. He was a great secret Santa, like Harmony. Harmony's a great secret Santa. <laughs> I know. Well oh. done, Harmony. And, you know, the weird thing is, is that just like uh, Larry Stewart's legacy lives on and people are now doing secret Santas all over in his memory. Now, Harmony wasn't tracking on him. I'm sure she just had her own idea there. But uh, but if you're tracking that whole idea, they don't know who he is. You never know what yeah. you inspire. How many of those mm-hmm. uh Gen 2, Gen 3, Generation 3 Secret Santas are popping up all over, uh, inspired by you and what you And I would created. say I have enough hope in humanity that, you know, if someone is given a gift like that, that somewhere in their life, they will give as well, right? Like, it's like when you are given to, you can't help but then to pass that on, right? It may look different than the original gift given to you, but that's where the generosity kind of butter reflects butterfly effect can happen and it may not happen every single time but i i have enough faith in humanity that i'm like i think it does like when something is given to you in a act of generosity your life is shifted and it changes and then you in turn want to be able to give too so i love the the passing on it's inspiring this thing called generosity this is the ramsey show Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author. My daughter is my co-host today. This is our annual giving show here on the Ramsey Show. We like to inspire generosity, and particularly here at Christmas time. Merry Christmas to you, America. We want you to be givers. We want you to enjoy money, and the greatest joy you'll ever get with it is the joy of generosity. One of the ways we also celebrate this uh, day of giving on the show is we get some of the folks that work at Ramsey, one of the 1,100 team members to come in and tell their giving or receiving story. And uh, Sarah is with us on the debt-free stage to tell her story. Hey, Sarah, tell us your giving story. All right. So about a year ago, and just in the past few years, my grandmother has been such an incredible blessing to my family and myself. Towards the end of last year in August, my grandfather unfortunately passed away due to covid But around the same time, my grandmother had made the decision to sell her home and move in with my parents. So while this while this was all happening, I was still living at home. And as a family, we were like, you know what, we're going to go through FPU. So we did. And every single video that we watched, because it was a remote class, my grandmother was just sitting on the couch quietly, just listening and absorbing all the information. And I really believe that something just changed in her heart that kind of 10x her generosity And she was already an incredibly generous person. I mean, she'd be the first one to pay for your food. Every time I went out, she'd be like, oh, and can I slip a few dollars your way for coffee? Just the sweetest little person, a (laughs) religious giver. And she also didn't just give her time, but she, or give her money, but she also gave her time. And part of the ways that she did that was every single week for as long as I can remember, she would spend a ton of time making just a ton of food for her local church youth, church youth group. And every single year, she also hosts our Thanksgiving family, so or our Thanksgiving feast. So she would spend days on end cooking. She would invite her family, and not just her family, but the entire church congregation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it was a whole feast. And she'd spent days preparing this. And she was older in age, so she had a weaker heart. 
and she couldn't even like just cook it all at once. She wow. literally had to break it apart that far just to do this. Wow. So it was just an incredible, just inspiring woman that she did all of this. And through this time, uh, towards the beginning of this year, unfortunately her health did start declining, but she wanted to make sure that her daughter's family, my mom, uh, was well taken care of. So as she was learning all of these principles near teaching, she had made the decision to pay off her vehicle and a few days later, she had told my mom, you know what, I want you to put this in your name because she knew that it would be her vehicle when she passed and she didn't want my mom to have that burden of a car payment. Mm -hmm. And that just helped so much. And on top of that, my grandmother was my biggest cheerleader and my biggest prayer warrior as I had made the decision to move from South Florida to Tennessee to pursue my dream job here at Ramsey Solutions. Oh, fun. Yeah, we, she would pray with me before and after every single interview. On top of that, she also helped fund one of my grad school tuition semesters, and that just helped incredibly as someone who was on Baby Step 3. And a few months after that, she actually gave me $5,000 towards purchasing my first car. Wow. As I moved up here, uh, I needed a reliable vehicle to get around. And I actually moved up here without the job, using the proximity principle to get the job. <laughs> um, and I couldn't have done this like on my own, but with her support, I was able to get my Dave car. I got my dream job here. And just last weekend, I walked for my graduation for my master's degree all debt free at 21. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh. So I'm super grateful for the impact that she's had me on that way, um, in that way, but it gets even better than that. And as she was continuing through financial peace towards the end, you know, we have that generosity video and she actually asked my mom one day if she would drive her to the bank. Now my mom had no idea what this, like why she wanted to go, go to the bank. She thought, oh, maybe she wants to open an account, an account. But on the drive over, she actually revealed that she wanted to pay off my parents' house. Whoa. In full, oh completely, gosh. like $200,000. It was insane. And there was nothing stopping her from doing this. Wow. So she went ahead and she paid off my parents' house. And without that mortgage payment, such a huge weight was just lifted off my parents' shoulders. And my family and I are just so incredibly grateful for the blessing of that from her and just her lasting legacy of generosity. And as I've moved up here now, uh, there was a weekend since I knew that her health was kind of declining that I had decided to go back and visit her in South Florida. And I flew in really early, I think like 6 a.m. that day, and I got to the home and I was sitting at her be bedside holding her hand. My mother was on the other side also holding her hand and I got the privilege to spend the last 20 minutes of her life by oh, her side. And just the lasting impact of generosity. I hope that I can carry that on. Wow. And this place helps me do exactly that. So I really am so grateful to be a part of this crusade. Wow. You're incredible. What a great story. Oh, that's oh, amazing. I love your granny. <laughs> she's awesome. Too. Yes, mm. she's incredible. Man, she's How incredible. old was she when she passed? She was 76. 76. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. How incredible. How many, how many grandkids does she have? Is it you and... It's actually just three. Three, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. But I was thinking, like, that's what I love about within a family unit, right? Mm -hmm. How it that, that trickle effect is so real. And Absolutely. as you're standing here, you're like, oh, yeah, your your life is completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, not just from the monetary gifts that she's given you, but it's the spirit, yeah. right? That Her generosity. Character. Yeah, who she Her is. Yeah. Absolutely. It's beautiful. My but mom was like, I hope that I can do that for you guys one day, too. And I'm just like, as much as we can do, we're trying to be generous in, the, like, not just the big ways, but the small yeah. ways as well. That's yeah. right. That's pretty cool. Very That's cool. Amazing, very, very well done. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Good stuff. All right, Sarah, tell everybody what you do here and how long you've been on the team. I am an email marketer with Every Dollar, and I've been here about eight months. And you said you're 21. <laughs> yes, And I you am. just got your master's in what? In strategic communications and leadership. Wow. Very yeah, cool. That's awesome. Well, you're, awesome. you're a great team member, and that was a wonderful generosity story very very Sweet well done grandmother oh, i love it thanks for sharing it sarah thank, thank you. you for having mm -hmm. me good so stuff good. generous people make us smile yes. generous people make our eyes leak i was crying on that one that one got me that was good right there that was powerful yeah oh, yeah pop a day wiping, wiping my tears away <laughs> yeah that was good so good sweet. stuff oh well, the granny kicking, the grandmother kicking in and just going, boom, I'm going to do this. And boom, I'm going to do that. Yep. And boom, I'm going to do that. And the other thing that just occurs, you know, as I'm sitting there, we've got so many 
millennials and Gen Xers on this team, and they get such a bad rap of mm. as uh, uh, you know, uh, ster- stereo- stereotypically shallow, yeah. being snowflakes, being right. not having hustle, not having grind, right. not having that. And uh, like so many stereotypes, they're just inaccurate. Um, there's certainly a, a segment of Gen Z and certainly a segment of millennial that's awful. That and a just... segment of the boomers and a segment of exactly. every other generation. Exactly. There's no question. And, but I got to tell you, we yeah. work up close and personal with a bunch of Gen Zs that are like her. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that, that lady right there is brilliant. Beautiful, yeah. 21, mm-hmm. great. She's got her, you know, she's articulate, uh, just finishes her master's degree. I mean, uh, and and is a, you know, proud member of this crusade and so on. So, you know, they're out there. They're yep. out there. And, uh, that, you know, when you get to meet people like Sarah, uh, you know that we're going to be okay. That Gen Z is, you know, there, there's enough of her, enough of those like her in Gen Z That's that right. are in That's good right. shape. That's right. Yeah, good mm. stuff. Hey, this is our giving theme hour. Thank you for our theme show today. Thank you for being with us on this. It's absolutely incredible to share these stories. If you've got a great giving story, jump in and we'll uh, try to get you on. The phone number is 888-825-5225. How Our Lives Have Changed. Trudy is in the Baby Steps Community Facebook group. How Our Lives Have Changed Since uh, Finding the Ramsey Financial Peace University at our church six years years ago before FPU it would be weeks before Christmas we'd be scrambling to find money to pay for gifts make payments on credit cards today my husband called to tell me it's giving Tuesday and we still have a sizable amount of money in our charity account I stopped decorating the house and started a poll in our town for people's favorite charities this is the most fun you can have with money before dinner tonight we are delivering checks oh there you go great. good stuff that's the way it's done intentional giving, intentional generosity. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, you cannot do a kindness too soon because you never know how soon it will be too late. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. You know, he he might have a future in that writing stuff that Ralph Waldo Emerson (laughs) got. You never know. This is a giving show for the Ramsey Show. We do it once a year. We should do it more. But we're here celebrating the power of generosity, grace, grace is in Tyler, Texas. Merry Christmas, Grace. Tell us your giving story. Merry Christmas, you guys. It's an honor to come on air today to share my story. Well, my story um, was back in 2020 during the height of all of the COVID shutdowns in the world spinning, it felt like. Uh, My husband and I were both fortunate enough to keep working, uh, keep our jobs, and actually have overtime opportunity as well. And so we were doing really good financially during that time when we know a lot of people weren't. So when those rounds of stimulus checks started coming in from the government, my husband and I both agreed that we wanted to use those checks to bless somebody who uh, who was struggling during that time. You know, we were praying about it, like, Lord, lead us to how you would have us use this money. And since there were so many needs, we didn't know, you know, which need to meet. There were so many. And the Lord put on my heart to just reach out to a friend of mine who the year prior had moved to 
to Uganda with her family to um, oversee and operate a a children's home there. Mm. It's basically like a foster home for babies, um, Mm. newborn through age five, who either don't have a family or for one reason or another aren't able to be cared for by their families. And they take care of these babies and love on them and provide for them and care for them until they're either reunited with their family or are placed with some kind of permanent you know, placement or, um, in some cases, domestic adoption. And, and when I reached out to my friend, I found out that they had been really hurting um, because of all of the lockdowns. There in Uganda, the lockdowns were extremely strict. They, It was really difficult for them to be able to leave their facility. They had strong regulations on regarding that. And even when they were able to leave, it's not like all of the markets were open and bustling. And so they were running quickly out of supplies for their clinic, medications, um, equipment, as well as clothes for those growing babies, since babies grow like weeds, and they needed clothes in the next sizes up and were not able to get them. So I asked my friend for a list of everything they needed for their clinic in terms of clothes, for the office, everything. And she sent that over to me, and my husband and I went to Walmart and completely cleared the list and packed up five very large boxes and express shipped them internationally to Uganda for them. Whoa, Um, that's fun. Grace, that's amazing. That is great. When they got those boxes, they must have thought Santa had shown up for sure. Yes, it was so sweet. My friend, when the first boxes started to arrive, she opened it and um, with some of the older babies, you know, the, the toddler age, um, sent me a picture with some of those babies holding some of the, the new clothes and items from the boxes. And that just, it made me cry just from the joy that I was feeling that I got to be, that we got to be a blessing for them. Um, you know, because we, you know, we were doing fine financially. We didn't need that money, and to be able to bless them in that way was just oh. so incredible. Oh, it was the most changing. fun I've had shopping ever. <laughs> Amen. That is the most fun ever. Oh, Grace, that's amazing. Well done, Grace. Very well done. Well played. I like it. Ian is with us in Milwaukee. Merry Christmas, Ian. Merry Christmas, guys. I haven't slept because I've been so excited to be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. We didn't mean to have that effect. How, how can no, we help? Right. To, t- tell us about it. Tell us your giving story. Um, so I am, I'm currently 37. Uh, when I was 35, I had been a police officer uh, for 13 years, and um, I just recently been promoted to sergeant. And up until that time, I had never had any inkling of having mental health issues. I was extremely healthy. I'd done everything I ever wanted to do at the department. And all of a sudden, something just clicked, and I was completely debilitated by a form of OCD where you think you're going to or you think you did um, harm your kids. Mm -hmm. And my little girls um, were two and five at the time, and I love being a girl dad. Um, And I was at work, and I'm constantly around all these bad people, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's me. I did something. I hurt them when I was changing their diapers. And my doctor's like, no, Ian, you have OCD, and you have it so bad, you need to contact Rogers Behavioral Health because they're, I mean, the best in the business. So I, I call them, and they're like, we need to get you in our residential program now you are you know you are one of the most severe cases we've seen and so i'm like all right let's do it i called my insurance and they said no we're we're not covering it because it's not worded inpatient even though that's what it was Mm. and so i'm thinking my gosh we have we were in baby step we still are four five and six and i said we can cover this but what happens if my treatment runs past 12, 16 weeks, and the department says, you're not fit for duty, we're going to leave. I mean, I was just so scared because that had been my life. And their foundation says, look, we will cover 100% your stay in inpatient. Wow. And we will make sure you, you get treated. Now, whose um, foundation? And, the, the mental health organization's foundation or the department's yes, foundation? No, the mental health organization. Oh, wow. 100%. That's, wow. And when when I came out and did like their their partial program and like daily therapy, um, we cash flowed that without touching our emergency fund. Wow! Um, and I 
did the disability process for retirement all by myself, um, and I was able to retire full pension. Um, and I, I cannot thank them enough because they they really did save my life, one hundred percent, and my family's life. And um, you know, now I get to be a girl dad. I get to to talk about this. I actually just wrote an article. I talk about this at churches and um, leadership conferences and schools. And, um, you know, you guys are my inspiration to do that. And that's what I get to do now. So, wow. Well, very well done. Story. Sounds like you're doing good. Are you? I'm doing good. Um, and, you know, actually, I there's a couple of people at your organization, Tristan, Don, and Aisha, they're listening today. And, actually just filled out an application for one of the positions with you guys to to give it a shot and maybe share my talents with you guys. Wow. Very cool, Ian. Very cool. That's a powerful story, though. And, yeah, the generosity, that piece is what a burden that's lifted off, you know, when you don't have to, to pay for something like that. I mean, that's that's absolutely incredible. And, you know, there's, there's things that are definable and you can put your finger on mental health things often aren't as easy to define. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you need um, heart surgery, that's a very definable, right, right. objective thing. If you've got uh, that form, uh, in his case, a form of OCD, that's a little tougher to uh, diagnose and to define that goes, oh, there's an end to this treatment. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and those people stepped up and, as he said, literally saved his life. Yeah, that's pretty that's incredible. Mm. Very cool. And that's the beauty of having around health care, mental health or, a, or a physical care, either one having foundations and things that support and move that. It's absolutely yes, vital. Yes. Well, guys, that's a great giving show. You folks out there did it again. You inspired each other. You inspired America by calling in and giving your great stories. Rachel, this whole generosity thing is a big deal. Well, it is, and it's a huge piece of, of why we do what we do here every day, getting people in a place where they can be freed up, where their money doesn't control them so that they can truly live and give like no one else. And this is that piece that we get to celebrate today. So thank you guys so much for calling in. Great job, Austin, Zach, Ben, James, Andrew in the booth, the booth dudes. They make the show happen. That puts this hour in the booth, in the shin. The <laughs> oh, whatever. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's Rachel Cruz, co-host on The Ramsey Show. If you want to do your debt-free scream live on the show, visit RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream. We'd love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. That's RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream.